Okay guys, we are headed out to the shop so that we can work away at getting these heads ready to go back on the old Mopar. So, stay tuned. So what we've got on the go here right now is a little bit of a fix up situation on these heads. You see, one of the things that I didn't notice before they machined the heads was on one of them, there was a little chip out of the cast that will play havoc with our sealing of the head gaskets, likely. So one thing that they did at the engine shop was they plugged this coolant passage with a plug, and we are going to use some JB Weld uh, right here on this spot. And all we're trying to do is just build that up so that we can get a flat surface for the head gasket they're made up against. This is just for the dowel that's on the engine block itself, so there's no coolant that passes through there at all. And that's why I've got the hair dryer on it, because these heads are a little bit cold. We're going to try and warm it up so that we can use the JB Weld. Obviously, this is not an optimum fix. Uh, the right fix would be to go out and find another set of heads, but you know what? We've got money and time invested into these, so we're going to continue with these ones. And I don't think it's that big of an issue. We've got our JB Weld, part one and part two. We're going to get that mixed up once we get the heads up the temperature and uh, we'll go from there. But first, before we go anywhere, I want to let you guys know that this video, as of right now, is officially sponsored. How, you might ask? Well, St. John Engine Rebuilders. When I went to talk to these guys, they were able to help me out significantly on the cost of getting these heads redone in exchange for sponsorship to this ad. So as long as we're putting these heads back on this car, they are an official sponsor of Old Car Auto Guy. So guys, they do have uh, Facebook and Instagram, St. John Engine Rebuilders. I will put their information right here. You can go check them out. And if you are local to the St. Stephen, St. John, Moncton, Fredericton area, I highly recommend these guys. So make sure you go check them out. Let's get back to the task at hand. Okay, so what we've gone and done is we've we found a drill that will fit down into that dowel hole so that we don't get it full of stuff. And we're just going to kind of fill around it. So we've got to get this stuff mixed up first. And if you've never used JB Well, it stinks. I'm just going to use equal parts. One's black and one's kind of a creamy color. You mix them, it's going to be gray and it looks like metal. So I am using just a tip of a flathead screwdriver, which I have cleaned off with some brake cleaner to make sure that it's free of dirt and oil. And start lathering it on there. It doesn't matter how thick it gets because we are going to be trimming it down once we get it uh, all dry. Now I've seen some professional guys, even Nick's Garage, use JB Weld to seal up some cracks and this and that. So I have a ton of faith in this stuff and I've used it on different things before and it works spectacular. So we're going to let that set up and when we come back, we can file it down with our knife or whatever we got at the time. We don't want to be hitting off on the surface here and gouging that up either. So we'll let that set up. It says four to six hours. I think what I'll do is I'll come back in a couple of hours and see exactly how set up it is. And maybe it's a little bit more moldable before it gets really, really hard. And uh, we'll start trimming it up. In the meantime, while we are waiting for that JB Weld to set up, one of the things that I've got to do is I've got to head back out to the shop and grab my lifters because I forgot them yesterday when I come home. And we'll get them soaking up in some oil. I do believe I've got some Mobile One over here that will soak them in and uh, get them ready to drop in there once we start putting things back together. So now that we've got those, we've got to find a bucket to put them in and fill it full of oil. So if you don't have anything clean laying around outside your garage, then what I would recommend is you go inside the house, go to the fridge, grab that Tupperware container that's got that leftover meatloaf in it, Take it over to the sink, wash it out really clean and really, really good, dry it off. Then you've got something clean to put your uh, motor parts in 
but you don't have to worry about food contamination. So now all we've got to do is get them out of their boxes and lay them inside the uh, container. And if my math is correct, on a V8 Chrysler, you need 16. So there's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15. I still got one in a box somewhere. There he is. So let's fill her out full of oil. And guys, this is what I've been using in my car is the Mobile One 10W30. And it seems to be the best for it as it doesn't make any noises and all this stuff. So. I don't know, it's what I'm using, you use whatever you want. And we'll just set these aside until we are ready to use them. And we'll check in on our JB weld and see how that's holding up. Still quite tacky, got a ways to go yet. So I think what we're gonna do in the meantime is we're gonna take our intake manifold and get it prepped and cleaned for a fresh coat of paint. So we've got our, all of our old gaskets to peel off here. And all we're gonna do is uh, use a wire brush and some brake clean and get all this grime off here. So as you can see by the uh, junk that I've got piled up around my garage, one day, just one day, I will be as good as Grant Tommy and have a clean garage. But let's get back to uh, cleaning this thing up. Guys, a really neat trick is if you have any old snow brushes kicking around, uh, we've got several of them. These old wooden ones you used to be able to pick up at Canadian Tire for you know four or five bucks. When they get wore out, the bristles still have a little bit of strength left in them. So this is what we're gonna use to scrub down this intake manifold. So let's get at her. Just using the brake cleaner alone is going to pull off a lot of grime. So we got the first coat of paint on this intake and uh, thermostat housing. And uh, when I first started spraying it, I realized that that does not look like Chrysler blue. It looks Ford blue. And my immediate reaction was, did they label the can wrong? Well, it does say Chrysler blue. Upon shaking it up for a lot longer time, uh, it did lighten up. So I just had to get it mixed up really, really well. So we're gonna put the second coat on and uh, hopefully it comes out a little bit lighter for that Chrysler blue look. So, let's get the second coat on. So that is looking a lot lighter. Looks a lot better now that we've got the uh, Chrysler blue color going there. And even when I first started spraying, it was dark and a little shake up. So I think we'll be very, very happy with that once it gets on there. And of course, we'll have to do some touch-ups on some other things as well, such as the water pump back around the top of the bell housing. And of course, the J-heads themselves will have to be taped off and painted once we get this little repair fixed up on it. You all know that I've already got the ARP head bolts and studs here, but we've got all of our gaskets ready to roll. We've got our intake gaskets. We've got our new head gaskets as well as our valve cover gaskets. And everything that I've got here so far is Felpro. Felpro gaskets have been used in the industry for years. This is not a high performance option. I don't see a need to go with anything any more expensive or more durable or whatever. The Felpro gaskets are a stock replacement and really that's all we're doing here. Just trying to get it to work a little bit better. So while we're waiting for the head to set up with the JV weld on it. We are going to dive into this one and get it all cleaned up and brake cleaned on the outside and ready for a nice coat of Chrysler Blue. Well 
there we have it guys we've got this head painted tomorrow when the JB weld sets up we'll get that trimmed up we'll get that one painted and then we will be ready to start putting these things back on the car so that is going to do it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching me just putter around the garage here a little bit and getting these heads prepped for installation back on the old Mopar so I'm looking forward to that looking forward to getting this thing on the road again because the weather really is starting to get better tomorrow it's supposed to be upwards of seven or eight degrees and uh, it would be a great day for going on that first cruise but I know that it's not going to happen this weekend but my goal is to finish this project up this weekend which you will see in the next video and we will have this thing out and running in no time guys I appreciate you sticking around giving me that big thumbs up commenting in the comment section down below and hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already because we've got lots more of this to go Guys, if you haven't checked out St. John Engine Rebuilders on Instagram and Facebook, please go do that now. I will leave a link in the description box below for them. Guys, four links also in the description box below for you guys to check out my channel and support me in more ways than just watching these videos. Link number one is for my bonfire.com merch account. You can go over there and pick up your very own old car auto guy t-shirt and or hoodie. Number two is for Straight Six Fan. That is Grant Tommy's YouTube channel. He is my co-host for the Thursday night live feed. I'm not sure when you guys are watching this particular video. It could even be tonight, but it most likely will be on his channel. So guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you all. God bless. And don't forget, send me your spare license plates. We're still trying to get project wall art, which is this beast right here, mounted on the wall, but I need some license plates to be able to do so. We'll see you again in the next video. Back up and get me